South Las Vegas. Uh, that church has grown from just 27 to 3,000 since 2003. And uh, they Wait live a minute, in, you just gave numbers that... Yeah. Right now, start over with those numbers now. Hey, the church has grown from 27 to 3,000 since 2003. So huge, okay. huge growth. And uh, he's got this incredible book, Tim, called More, Discovering the God of More When Life Gives You Less. And obviously very appropriate uh, to talk about this and a whole lot more as we talk about these tornadoes. And uh, welcome, uh, Benny. Well, thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Tell us about your church, brother. Well, I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. So uh, it's a very interesting place to pastor. And uh, God called me and my wife to plant a church there in 2003. And our church is very multicultural, uh, multi-generational, and uh, fancy word multi-economic, which means rich and poor, and everybody in between. So multi-economic, very... <laughs> and I hadn't heard that. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? It's just a church, honestly, that's reaching people from every sphere of life in Las Vegas. And uh, we're just happy to be a part of it, and, and God's doing something very special and supernatural, and uh, it's all His grace, and He happens to use me and a bunch of other people that are just followers of Jesus that are doing our very best for Him. So. Hey, one other question about the church, and we'll move on to your book. When you grow from 27 people to 3,000 <laughs> wow. in 10 years, how do you handle that as far as a leadership uh of the church issue are you an elder deacon or what do you how do you do that yeah that's a great question you know uh and i think one of our biggest challenges with having a fast-growing church it, it has always been our leadership and so we're constantly working and developing new leaders you know in our small groups um through our men's ministry our women's ministry um uh, you know we're elder driven and then we have uh ministry partners we call them mps and basically, to be honest with you, I, I joke with the church all the time. I said, guys, you know, I want to let you know we have over 600 staff members at this church. And everybody kind of like looks at me. And I said, now, a majority of those are not paid, mm. you know, and everybody c catches it. And so we are striving hard to believe, you know, in the Ephesians 4 model that we are to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. So, you know, uh, we have a, a pastoral team, but I think overall for the size of our church, the paid staff is very small in comparison. And uh, so we just want to let people know God calls you. God has, has gifted you. You have something God has deposited within you. So we have people that visit the hospitals. We have people that are working in the community. We have people that are, you know, raised up to, to really do the work of the ministry and and so we're working hard at that. I mean, are we are we perfect with that? No, but constantly we're we're putting that in our culture that you are saved to minister. You know, not saved just to go to heaven, but you're saved to make a difference in your world. So that's what we're doing, and you know, it seems to be uh, to be working. And and uh, like any church, though, we're always you know working to uh, take care of the things that uh, that need help in our in our structure. Sure. So. Well, we're talking to Pastor Benny Perez, and the book is called More, Discovering the God of More and Life Gives yeah. You Less. Well, Pastor, tell us about this book. Uh, you, you talk about how you can experience peace and joy while facing tribulations when, you know, frankly, we don't really know how, the, how it's going to end. You know, how in the world can you do that? Tell us about your book here. Yeah, you know, the book was actually burst out of uh, our, our pain and our tragedy, me and my wife. And the last three years, I, I tell people it's been the best of times and the worst of times for us. Here we are in a fast-growing church. I mean, God's doing significant things. And yet in our own personal life, you know, we suffered the loss of two unborn children. The last, you know, miscarriage was devastating with the baby dying on the screen in front of us. Uh, to my father-in-law, who was a great pastor, you know, lost his battle with cancer. And in 2010, he went on, you know, to uh, be with the Lord in heaven. And then actually nine weeks after my father-in-law dies, my own dad has a massive heart attack, has a nine-way bypass surgery, almost lost him on the table. And so after, you know, storm after storm, tragedy after tragedy, and, and, and we, I sat back as a pastor, and I'm going, okay, you know, I know we don't earn or deserve anything, but God, I can't take much more, you know, with the economy and, and people losing everything. And in the midst of that, you know, I really, really began to look at my own life, begin to look at what did I really believe, and what was my life really built on? And through all the struggle, through all the storms, through all the stuff that we went through, 
I begin to realize that God is really the God of more, even when life is giving you less. And the book of James talks about kind of all joy when you go through trials and tribulations. And for me, and I talk about it in the book, how I just begin to realize, you know, i got to quit trying and start trusting Jesus more. And trust in the times when I don't understand. And trust in the tragedy. And trust when, oh, life is screaming at me, God's against you, and you've done something wrong. And, and my God, I mean, my, my stuff is not any more horrific than than other, what other people have gone through. In fact, what has just happened in Oklahoma? I mean, I sit back and look at the devastation, and people have lost not just their homes, but some of them have lost lives. And I sit back and I'm going, God, you know, how do you make sense of this? And in the end, you know, the book isn't there to answer the why question. It's there to turn people to really trust the person of Jesus in the midst of extreme pain. Mm-hmm. You're listening to the radio program Today's mm-hmm. Issues on American Family Radio. I'm Tim Wildman with John Riley. Our guest today is Pastor Benny Perez. <laughs> and I just had to sneeze on live national radio, <laughs> and there was nothing I could do to stop that, nor could I even have pressed the button to uh, to quiet the microphone. I was just caught, trapped. I couldn't even tell you guys what was happening. So there you go. Uh, it happens, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Pastor uh, Perez uh, has got, got a book. Your, your book is called More, uh, uh, Discovering the God of More When Life Gives You Less. Yes. You, do you describe what the uh, what it's basically about? Uh, do you have a Do you have a website, or how do people get a copy of this? Uh, uh, you know, they could they could pick it up at different uh, websites. You know, online, uh, they can go to Amazon.com, and you could download it either as on your mobile device, you know, as a Kindle, or you can actually buy. Uh, the book itself. Uh, if you want to go through my website, they can go to themorebookbonuses.com, themorebookbonuses.com, and uh, you know they we give them some added stuff if they if they get the book through there. But ultimately, we want the people to get the book because it's going to help people that are going through pain, loss, and tragedy. Pastor, we're almost out of time. Can you give us some of the more you talk about God giving you more? What are some of the mores? so to speak, that, and we, we're just about out of time, but what are some of the mores that those listening going through hard times right now could, could, could be encouraged with? Yeah, you know what? The more is his presence. You know, the Bible says that he draws nigh to them that have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. There's something about loss that causes you to turn either to get bitter or begin to turn and say, God, I need your presence. He promises his presence will be with us. And so I tell people, I know it's not a 10-step thing, but it's just turning and looking and receiving God's love and His presence, really supernaturally, number one, and then number two, through people. You know, God's presence flows through people. God's love flows through people. And when we go through things, I learned I wanted to retreat. I wanted to isolate. But then I said, no, God, I'm part of a community. And God brought people around me, even as a pastor of a church, and my people begin to minister to me in my pain. So there's God's presence, and then God uses people and when you begin to embrace that and don't run away, don't isolate or insulate, it's amazing what the community of faith will do in your life. And that's what I believe is going to happen in Oklahoma as churches and other people come around those people and say, listen, God's, God's here. You may not sense him, but you're going to sense him through me, through my love, through my care, through my words, through my encouragement. And I want to encourage everybody out there, if you know somebody who's going through pain, don't try and answer the question. Just give them the comfort and the love that Jesus Christ wants to give them through you. Why do these mm-hmm. things happen to people? You know what? I wrestle with that, and I think that's something that's been wrestled, uh, wrestled with that question for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And in my book, I say, you know what? I was asking the why question, but God didn't an- give me the answer to the why question. He gave me something better, and that was the who, and the who was Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. And I'm telling you, my relationship with the Lord has deepened through my pain, has deepened through the stuff, and I still don't know why things have happened. And I have had people try and tell me why, and at the end of the day, only God knows why. And so I'm going to trust Him in all that and just believe that in the end, when I finally get to heaven, I'm going to look back and realize, okay, now I may understand. But now I look back and I say, God, you brought me through, and I believe that you're still going to give me a great future and a great hope, mm. even if I don't understand what has happened to me in my present or even in my past. Mm. You know, it's an issue of trust for me. Yeah. Mm. It's just, you know, you drive yourself crazy asking why yeah. things happen uh, in, in, 
that are tragic yep. or, or, you know, in, in your, in your life or people, mm-hmm. you know, you know, things happen and you go, why does yep. that happen? Why did that happen? Now, a lot of things that happen, even though we still wonder why can be explained because of the choices of, of man, mm-hmm. sure. you know, uh, we, sure. we bring, we bring a hardship on ourselves or others because of choices that we make. And then sometimes things happen that are, you know, natural disasters, like what happened in right. Oklahoma. And then some things, cancer hits and you go, I've, I've been eating right, exercising. That's right. What, what, what in the world's going, going on, on here? here? Well, I'm doing all the right things. So, you know, but you know what doesn't change is, Pastor Benny, like you said, God is still God yep. no matter what happens. That's right. correct. That's right. Yep. God is still God no matter what happens. Yep. And guess what? Uh, there is a, an eternity ahead of us. Uh, I don't yes. mean to sound trite or like, you know, like <laughs> sometimes people say things and go, you don't know what the pain I'm going through. Yep. I'm just telling you that there is, uh, t- there is tomorrow. And by tomorrow, I mean, there is eternity pastor in there. And, and so that's, that's the long view, I guess. Uh, we, we'll yep. suffer suffering here on earth, yep. but you know, it's not going to last forever. No. And I tell people this, I say, listen, whoever promised you Christianity without pain and suffering is not real Christianity because Jesus right. said in this life you can have tribulation. But here's, right. the, here's the great thing about Christianity is, listen, you're not going to be isolated from storms, but you're going to have somebody that's going to walk with you yes. through the storm, and that's so, Jesus. Well, there was an old that's song, right. uh, contemporary at the time, song back in the 80s or 90s, said sometimes he calms the storm. That's right. Sometimes he calms the storm, and other times he calms his child. That's right. right. That's good. Uh, mm-hmm. but Pastor Benny Perez has been our guest, P-E-R-E-Z. His book is called More, M-O-R-E, Discovering the God of More When Life Gives You Less. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Pastor Benny. Thank you, you so much. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Uh, you. you too. Take care. We'll be back. Uh, we're going to turn our attention to reaching and mentoring young boys who don't have dads. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of that in our yes. country. What can we as a Christian community do to respond to that? We'll be back after this break. You're listening to... Today's issues on American Family Radio.